Hi, this is Dustin Hausner. I'm the Jewish Outreach and Program Director at the Wayne YMCA. All our Jewish programs is funded through the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey. Uh, today, I'm really excited about our guest. I had the great privilege of meeting this person uh, many years ago. He's just a phenomenal human being with so much great work that he does. Um, I would like to introduce uh, my good friend, uh, Bill Cobb. Uh, Bill, it's wonderful to have you here. Dustin, thank you, friend, for inviting me. I'm delighted to be joining you today to talk about you. Fantastic. So just to talk a little bit about you, just to brag a little bit about you before we talk about uh, Juneteenth, which I'm very excited to do. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, Bill Cobb um, of uh, Cobblestone Solutions is the former deputy director of the ACLU campaign for smart justice. Bill Colette and des designed the largest campaign in the organization's 98 year history. Bill resides in Philadelphia, where he serves on the boards of the Community Legal Services, Defender Association of Philadelphia, Philadelphia Legal Assistance, and is a trusted advisor to many of the nation's leaders and influencers. Bill is currently a principal of Cobblestone Solutions, a company, company that provides strategic solutions for government, for profit, and nonprofit organizations. So is there anything else you do in your free time? Well, I'm a father of seven children, and I have a wonderful wife, and a mentor hundreds of kids and other adults. So a little bit of other things. And a barbecue, of course. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. So um, I wanted to talk to you specifically because coming up we have Juneteenth and I know it's a holiday you have celebrated for many years and are very passionate yes. about. So for anyone who's just not knowledgeable on what, what exactly is Juneteenth? Thank you for that amazing question that um, anybody will be able to knock out of the park after this. Um, Juneteenth is a celebration of the release of um, people who served as slaves in the United States. Um, what's unique about Juneteenth is that it's not an actual celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves, so to speak, but it's the celebration of a general riding into a town in Texas years after the Emancipation Proclamation, making the announcement and letting those people know that they were no longer slaves. And so um, for many years, people across the nation, separately and sporadically, had tried to elevate this celebration to acknowledge the, um, the descendants of African slaves, um, want to hold up this holiday to celebrate our liberation and so many other people who have been enslaved um, at one time or another actually elevate the days that they were and perhaps in the spirit of being liberated upon a land in which we've been working for more than 400 years. So what's interesting is you mentioned that's not a celebration of when emancipation passed. It's specifically right. when, um, when in Texas, the last, um, how to phrase this, when it was the last notification of the freedom of slavery was done in a Confederate state. So, Correct. so for those who are, who are not knowing, I think when many people hear the Emancipation Proclamation, they think it freed all the slaves, like, they, like it was a magical decree. And I think people would be surprised to know that it actually was very limited in its scope. Actually... Yeah, um, so obviously things weren't instant those days. Much things traveled by messenger. Um, I've read dozens of stories of messengers who were to go to certain places and carry the message that slaves were liberated. Um, they were being murdered for years. Um, and so to think that people were now liberated and were free, and because we didn't have the capacity to communicate effectively in an instant, there was no Instagram, um, there wasn't even a good version of a Pony Express, so to speak. Um, and because people were, um, people had a vested interest in making sure that those people did not leave those plantations and those people continued to labor, um, made sure that they invested their resources in controlling the communications chains, therefore not even letting many people know that they were free. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, people who were free were still forced to escape as if none of the infrastructure of the slave system had been dismantled because it wasn't. Um, people were free in name, but not free in action. And that's so today, today we pass this piece of legislation um, and then we have to get it implemented or it never has teeth. And so it's not very different than it was yesterday. It's just that the information didn't get spread out as quickly. And so that caused there to be years delays. Um, to the truth of the matter is that there are communities in America where just up into two decades ago, mm -hmm. slavery in its old form was still being practiced in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So 
how do I'm, I'm curious when you, you say people kind of recognize Juneteenth or you know celebrate Juneteenth what what does that look like exactly because um, you know it wasn't something that I grew up with originally it's not something you read in the history book necessarily so what what exactly how do you recognize Juneteenth so that is a great question, right? And because there isn't a federal holiday and there are no guidelines, Juneteenth is celebrated across the nation through a variety of different ways. People celebrate it with parades and marches and barbecues. So what I would say to anybody is you take a 4th of July celebration, you take a Juneteenth celebration, and while the primary colors of a a, a July 4th celebration are red, white, and blue. The primary colors of a Juneteenth celebration are red, black, and green. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it. It's just bringing together communities of people, telling the stories about slavery and about our freedom and our liberation, mm -hmm. bringing in all sorts of leaders. And sometimes there are assemblies in schools. Other times there's marches and parades. And so it's a celebration of freedom and a celebration of life. Um, and we hope to actually have it elevated and have the entire nation celebrate the liberation of people who were already free by law, but not free in practice. Um, because we know that because we've never embraced that celebration, because we've never established that as a foundation, today black and brown people are still not liberated um, in practice, although we're liberated all the time. Well, I was going to, you kind of lead it into it, but I was going to ask you if there's a particular reason why you think, number one, it's not a federal holiday, but also you know, why is it something that, you know, many people don't really know much about? You would think it would be a very significant day in our history for, you know, for all intents and purposes, as you mentioned, you know, there are still systems that exist today, but, you know, for the ending of slavery of its time, you know, the celebration of that changing and shifting. So I'm curious your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, education, we've been, for years, um, people have been working to change our education systems to not teach people that uh, Columbus discovered America, um, to teach people that black and brown people were enslaved and it wasn't anything that we enjoyed. Um, and so because we haven't been honest in telling the world who America is, how it was founded, and because we whitewashed those things and changed those things to continue a perpetuation of um, having superior and inferior complexes, because racism is still working. Um, and it's rooted in our education system. And so no one wants to tell people about the atrocities done to a people um, that they have just been informed that have been lazy or slothful and are literally dragging society down instead of the people who actually engineered it and built them. So for someone who is, who is just learning about Juneteenth the first time, whether it's through this video or through other resources, you know, what are things that can be done, especially with, unfortunately, the coronavirus, which is obviously around our country, you know, what are, what are things you would personally recommend of either us, besides wearing the, you mentioned the uh, uh, red, black, and green uh, flag symbol, which is the Pan-African flag, you know, what are right. what things we could read, what are things we could do to kind of get an under, a better understanding or get a better feel for, for Juneteenth? Thank you. Amazing question. The answer is easy. Um, on June 14th, there will be thousands of virtual celebrations and acknowledgments of Juneteenth across the nation. Mm. Um, you can order books from Black authors who talk about those subjects of Juneteenth. Um, you can talk to your peers and colleagues um, who may celebrate Juneteenth and find out if there's a way for you to participate. Um, these celebrations are not closed to people who are the descendants of slaves, um, that, but they are open to the entire community to embrace it, to celebrate that this country finally understood the value of humanizing every single person on its continent. And so if we can come together under that accord and celebrate that, that is something that you can embrace and I can embrace and everybody who benefits from us living in harmony together can celebrate. And that is the essence of Juneteenth. So it's not something separate, it's something that's whole and inclusive, but it's emanating from the people who were most negatively impacted by the harm. But it belongs to all of us who celebrate liberty and want to live harmoniously here in this country. You kind of answered harmoniously. No, no, no problem. So, I mean, you kind of answered the question just now, but I was going to just say, um, in regards to for someone who finishes this video and goes out into the world and does whatever they wish to do, you know, what would you want their takeaway to be? In other words, when it comes to thinking about Juneteenth, whether they choose to celebrate it in some way, shape, or form, or um, decide that, you know, I don't know enough. Uh, what, what would you want them to take away thinking at the end of this video? 
um, I think the one thing that I always want people to do is come out with a curiosity. Um, it's a lot to consider that um, the magnitude of it all. For some people may have never heard that um, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't instantly free slaves and they didn't instantly transform their lives from a incarcerated people to a free people or to whatever the measurement of our liberty is now. Um, so I want people to come away with a curiosity. Um, I want people to come away with an itch that needs to be scratched to find out how we can better all just love and support one another um, because celebrating the liberty and the freedom of the people who were enslaved on this continent for 400 years means that you feel and you think very differently about them than the institutions in which we're all a part of have um, continuously influenced us and in some way, shapes and forms um, forced us to do so when we're sharing our economics, our politics, our, our social, political capital. So what I want people to do is just um, be curious and, and, and look to just learn a little bit more about Juneteenth and if they can possibly celebrate uh, a supportive celebration and spread the word and then give support to our effort to have it become a national holiday, find out what the political stance on it is and know that it's really important um, and relevant to black and brown people to have this holiday set up and have everyone to celebrate it, to take a look at where we've come from and where we are, because I think that that will make us all hopeful. As a nation, we have come from a very dark place. The examination of where we come from can really help us re-examine our North Star. We can set it together collectively and then hand in hand um, with love in our hearts and our minds and our spirits, we can actually uh, transform the way that we feel about one another, think about one another, believe about one another, and then we can be different um, and we can all just be one. Well, that's fantastic. And I really do hope that anyone who's watching this will if they didn't know about Juneteenth, we'll look at a lot of amazing resources. There's plenty of literature, there's plenty of songs, there's plenty of ways you can recognize the day. And um, to echo in a much less eloquent way than what Bill just said, because he did so well, you know, to, to see the importance of learning about this, because obviously there is a great interconnectivity to it and it can create opportunities for dialogue and conversations and such. Um, was, that, was that good or? Uh, <laughs> now, so like, here's a soundbite. Having studied a little bit of Jewish, the things that happened to Jewish people in this world, um, just think that there's an equivalent of an Anne Rice somewhere in the black and brown communities. Like those stories are out there. Yeah. Um, and though that story transformed me and what I felt and thought about how we treat each other as human beings. And so there's an opportunity to see it from a different perspective as well. No, absolutely. So. Bill, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Um, I think this was a very beginning to a bigger conversation about Juneteenth and what people can learn on their own. So I really want to thank you for making the time today. Dustin, I thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. I love everyone. And I hope everyone celebrates Juneteenth and has an amazing time learning about this country, the people in it, and how we can all be better together. Fantastic. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's uh you video today. I hope you will go out and uh, celebrate Juneteenth. I hope you'll stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, hope you'll watch more of our videos. So have a wonderful rest of the day, Bill. Thank you so much. Thank you.